Have you ever wanted to build an event registration form that allows your customers to buy tickets? How about allowing them to make donations at the same time? How about all of that data going into Salesforce? Well, if all of that meets your criteria, then this is a video for you. So this is what the flow looks like. One person registers for an event. This is what we call the primary contact. The total price of the tickets is summed up based on quantity and the contact can add up to five additional guests. All the tickets are purchased using payment integration. In this example, Stripe. The contact might optionally choose to make separate donations. After the successful payments, the success message is displayed and we allow the primary contact to log into the self-service portal to update their details, track their tickets, and finally, their donations. So after looking at those slides, you may be wondering, well, how difficult is this to build? Do I need developers if I'm a nonprofit and may not have the resources? And those are justified questions. So let's get into it. Let me show you how this is done using drag and drop and you don't need any code whatsoever. So those are the drag and drop features, just gives you a glimpse of how you can just be a simple admin who can build this overnight without any developer skills needed. But like I said, it's just the glimpse. I wanna get into the next part, which is building this and linking you to Salesforce. So you'll get to see the laundry list of requirements that my client had, what we did in Titan, and then what the output in Salesforce looks like. This is the most exciting part. This is what you're here for. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first objective we're going to focus on is one person registers for an event. They can optionally include five additional guests, providing demographic information for each. Now, step one, we'll create a contact. Step two, we'll create an opportunity, linking the main contact as a primary contact to the opportunity from step one. And then step three, create additional contacts and link them up to opportunity contact roles, which will then link to the opportunity. To do this, I'll quickly go ahead and fill out some details. So we've got Benjamin Adams as my primary contact. I click next and guess what? This will create a record in Salesforce. It will read that result back into the table and it will automatically select one quantity for me. Now to reference this to Salesforce, if I refresh, you can see that the opportunity is now created. I'm gonna highlight a couple of the points for you. We go to the opportunity name, currently set to qualification, and we have linked Benjamin as a contact role. If I scroll further down, you'll be able to see that Benjamin is now also linked as primary contact. So we're off to a really, really good start here. If I go back and let's say I select quantity three, you can see that the total is now 750. I can add more members. And as I add each member, it writes back to Salesforce. It reads that result back into the table. I'll add one more. And now it's added. If I go back into Salesforce and I will open up opportunity contact roles, you'll notice it's now populated with multiple records. Just like that. And these records are now also created as contact. This will allow you to track everything at each step. So that is objective one completed. Objective number two. The integration matches existing contacts for the main registrant and up to five additional guests. If a contact is found, it is used. Otherwise, a new contact is created. So in step one, we'll attempt to create a contact via Titan. Titan will query the Salesforce in real time. If the contact is found, it is used. Otherwise, a new contact is created. 
to test this scenario, I have a contact already created in my sales with the name of Rachel. Now, Rachel has an email, Rachel has a mobile phone number. However, Rachel is not part of the opportunity that's been created earlier in step one or objective one. So I've got Benjamin, Alex and Lucas as part of the opportunity contacts via contact, but Rachel is not the part. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the quantity to four. We're going to allow to add Rachel. So what I'll do is I'll choose Professor Rachel and everything is the same exactly how it is in Salesforce. All the details match up, the email, the phone number, everything the same. Now, when I click submit, what will happen? Will it create a duplicate? Where Will it create uh, nothing? And because Rachel already exists, I just want to use Rachel's contact ID to be able to add into the opportunity as opportunity contact role. So we'll go ahead and click submit. It runs its thing, it refreshes, and now you can see Rachel's been added. But if I go back into Salesforce and refresh, you can see there's no duplicates been created. But if I go to the opportunity, we have taken Rachel's contact ID and simply added her into Salesforce. This is very, very cool because now you don't have to worry about the duplication side of things. We can pick up existing contacts and add them into Salesforce. Objective number three. All registrants are added as campaign members to a registration campaign in Salesforce. So in step one, registrants created as contacts. Tyson queries and identifies the relevant campaign. Step three, link the created or existing contact as a campaign member. To demonstrate this capability, I have Benjamin Adams into my opportunity. So it's very simple. What we did, we created a contact, we created an opportunity, and within the opportunity, we've got opportunity contact roles. Now, what I would also like is after the contact role is created for that contact to also be added into a campaign as a campaign member. So I've created a campaign. It's called Letterbox Kids Foundation Campaign. And you can already see that Ben Jamin is already part of that campaign. Now, I'm going to do this live. So we'll go back into the form. We'll create, increase the quantity. We'll add a new member. So I'll go ahead and add Emily. Now, once you click Submit, Tyson will go ahead and create the contact in Salesforce. So we'll have a look at contact first. You can see Emily's now created. If I go to the opportunity, you'll be able to see Emily's part of the contact role. And then the third aspect of that is within the campaign and campaign member, Emily is now added as a campaign member. This means you can go as deep as you want with one to many relationships and create them. Now, how about if Emily already exists in the campaign, will it create a new one or will it just ignore it? Well, ideally it should just ignore it. So if I'm going back in there and select Emily again and I click submit, nothing happened there. But if I go back into Salesforce, has anything else happened in there? Nope, absolutely not. So we don't want to create duplication in the campaign contact or the opportunity. So this is how Tyson does that. Objective number four. An opportunity record and a payment record are created for the main registration for the summer tickets purchased and various custom fields are populated. So in this scenario, we want the opportunity and we want to link it to the opportunity contacts in step one. In step two, we want to accept payment and we will use Stripe for this. And then in step three, once the payment's been made successful, we will update the opportunity as close one and add transaction data from Stripe to the opportunity itself. So I've added my contacts and I'm ready to pay. In Salesforce, the opportunity is currently set to qualification. And when I'll complete the payment, I will have payment answer directly added from Stripe into this field called payment answer itself. So if I head over back there and I say pay here, this will trigger Stripe and it will bring up the card number details, expiration dates and CVV. So I'll have to just add my data. Once I've added my card details, my expiry and my CVV, I can just click submit. At this point, Stripe will interact with Salesforce and Tyson. It will complete the payment 
market as successful and it will push the Stripe data back into Salesforce. So in Salesforce, if I just go ahead and refresh, you'll notice the first thing, which is the opportunity is now set to closed one, which is what we want. It's collected the amount, the payment has been marked as success, and to finish it all off, in the payment answer, we actually have data directly from Stripe, which is the receipt. If I click on it, it takes me there and shows me the receipt directly from Stripe into Titan. So that is a full life cycle of adding your customers, adding the payment, making the payment, and having all of that data flow into Salesforce successfully. Objective number five. Contacts might optionally choose to make separate donations. So we'll need to create another opportunity linked to the main contact. So step one, create an opportunity, link it to the primary contact, accept donation payment via Stripe, update the opportunity as closed one and add transaction data from Stripe to the opportunity. Okay, let's assume for a moment that this opportunity has been paid off. I know I the, the main opportunity where the tickets are purchased is set to close one, my products are there, all good, my contacts are also created. Now, I, as a donor, maybe want to make additional donation on the next page. So what you can do is you can set up conditional logic on Titan. When I check this, it will go ahead and create an extra step in the stepper. Checked, and now notice there is a step called donation. In this step, I can choose the amount I'd like to donate. And maybe I can choose uh, existing amounts that are preset for me. I can choose if it's one time or it's recurring. I can set up a custom amount. So let's go ahead and add that and click next. This will trigger Stripe. I will go ahead and enter some data. Once my data has been entered, we'll click submit. Now in Titan, this will create a completely separate opportunity linking the primary contact directly to it. So this opportunity, this will be completely untouched. And now you can see there's an opportunity called donation. And just like previously, we have the donation name, opportunity set to closed one. We know the amount is $6,000. We know that the primary contact is linked directly. And if we go down, you can see that the payment answer, and this is it, this is all there is to it taking additional donation, but creating it as a completely separate opportunity. And just like that, we're ready to move on to our final objective. Allow the primary contact to log into a self-service portal to update their details, track their tickets and donations. So step one, enable a secure portal with two-factor authentication. Step two, allow the contact to update their details. And then the final step, enable an interface to track their tickets and donations. This is what the portal looks like branded to your company. Now inside of Salesforce, you can see Benjamin Adams has a donation and a ticket purchase. Now I'd like Benjamin to be able to track that. Under a contact, Benjamin is just a simple record with an email address. Nothing crazy, doesn't need any super license. It's just a contact. What Benjamin can do can take that email, head up to the portal, click continue. At this point, Titan checks if that email exists in Salesforce. If it does, it will send that email a two-factor authorization code. We'll head over to the email. This is what it looks like. It can also be sent via text. When I copy the code, enter it, and I log in, straight away, it loads the data from Salesforce. And if I want to make an update, I certainly can. If I head over to the next page, I can see the tickets that I've purchased and it will show me all the attendees that are attending that event. If I head over to the next page, I can track all my donations over the months, over the years, over the periods. To set something like this up, it will take no more than one hour and it's done using no code whatsoever. So that was a demo and you get to see that how a simple form can go into so much depth with logic. However, I will reiterate, you don't need any developer experience. This is something an admin should be able to do. 
So you get to see the laundry list we were able to solve and not only build a form, but then also take payments. And finally, supplementing all of that, we were able to give a beautiful portal that somebody can log into and track their donations as well as their tickets. My name is Amit. I love bringing these use cases every week and I look forward to bringing more. So please subscribe and if you want to get in touch, send me a DM on LinkedIn or put a comment in the YouTube section. Thank you for watching.